Hi, this presentation is going to be a quick overview of object animations and Timeliner. So what I have here is Navisworks 2016 and I'm going to show you how you can start to use this Timeliner tool to set up and import tasks from different data sources, do some basic uh, configurations and then uh, simulate your construction program with the Navisworks 3D model. Uh, simply to bring in the data, you can actually do this manually inside the product, but you could uh, best to bring in your own construction program that you've made, say, in an application like Microsoft Project, or you've done an Excel and saved it out as a CSV, or you could use Primavera. Here, inside of Navisworks, there's these seven different formats, and if you've got other add-ins, uh, other construction programs will link in as well. I'm going to show you how to uh, click on some of the rules here, and then apply these rules to attach the construction program naming to the selection sets inside of Navisworks. So the core thing to note here is you need to get the naming exactly right. Make sure that the uh, cellular beams on level two for your selection set inside your product are named the same as the construction program. So over here, here's a search set I've created inside Navisworks. Cellular beam level two, uh, when I go to run the rules to auto attach those tasks, it's going to attach it to that cellular beam in the construction program. So here in uh, Navisworks, here's my model. Uh, it's just the structure for this particular demo. I'm going to go to uh, my home tab here. We've got selection sets. You can go to manage sets and you can see I've got a number of uh, selection sets here for my uh, components inside my, my authoring model here. So what I want to do is I want to go to my data sources first. So uh, if, you can, if you haven't found Timeliner, um, simply the core tools for Navisworks are up here in the top ribbon. Uh, these are the main ones here on the right. Just a quick note, um, Clash Detective is part of Navisworks Manage, not Simulate, but if you've got Simulate you will get Timeliner and QTL and rendering. So the Timeliner tool, we hit it, uh, we're going to start with data sources, go to add data sources, and in this case I've got a CSV file here, and this is my uh, construction program for structure. I'm going to open that up, and I'm just going to leave it on the um, default settings here, so row 1 contains the headings, and it's automatically going to detect the date, time, and format, and you can see here it's uh, mapping some of that information. I'm going to go OK, and now I have my data source. The, uh, the next thing I want to do is go to tasks and in the tasks, you can actually manually add the task, but I'm going to just uh, navigate over here a little bit. You see when you hover over some of the buttons here, you've got insert a new task, um, add a task. We're going to use the um, automatically generate task based on the uh, model or geometry sets. So as I mentioned before, I've actually got some sets here, it's going to auto, auto attach via the sets. And there's a, uh, a setting over here. You can actually uh, manually attach items to the task. So you're doing your tasks, then you're going to attach. Or we can set up some, some rules. So the rules I want to use here to run this command. Uh, I'm just going to bring this across a little bit. I'm going to map the timeline of task from the column name to the selection sets with the same name, uh, matching case. So this is why it's important to get those two naming conventions one within your sets and your construction program matching and then you'll be able to benefit from using this tool. So simply go to uh, auto, auto attach and now it's going to attach uh, those items to my construction program here. And you can see uh, because I'm extracting uh, planned start dates and end dates from uh, my CS, CSV file, um, they're appearing here in my construction program, my Gantt chart here. So you can start to see there's all these dates, uh, when certain items like for the footings are going to be excavated and poured, for the pile caps, etc. They're all geared up uh, here. So this is just a, a basic one, but there's, there's several different ways you can bring um, different formats of information in. Uh, you can also go here and uh, provide things like extended columns. So if you want to go a little bit more advanced, you can start to add material costs, labor costs, equipment costs, subby costs, uh, total costs, and then there's things to do with scripts, animations, and animation behaviors. So for those of you who've watched a few more videos, 
uh, before on the AWS ANZ YouTube channel. We've got some stuff on animations. Uh, you've actually got different types of uh, ways to attach the animation behavior, um, stuff inside the model here, which you can link through as well. So I won't get into that for now. This is just uh, the basics of Timeliner. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, to configure. Configure, this is um, comes down to, to personal preference. You've got, uh, by default, construct, demolish, and temporary. So construct, uh, it's gonna show as a green transparent color. It's gonna do a model appearance uh, for the end appearance. Um, and there's no other settings here for uh, early appearance or late appearance. You can go and uh, click on how you want this to work. You have a bit of play around. And then there's appearance de definitions here, depending on um, how you want it to graphically look. So that, that's pretty easy. Um, and of course, demolish is demolishing the existing buildings. Temporary could be your, your form work or your false work or any um, kind of equipment you may have on the site. So, uh, and you can also add uh, other ones if it's uh, not available. And then finally, we have simulate. So as soon as you go to the simulate tab, everything's gonna uh, disappear. And uh, I've got a basic date and timestamp here. And as I go and drag my slider here, it's gonna go through the uh, build of the construction or uh, displaying the model as per my, uh, per my construction timeline. So as I scrub across here, you can see the green is highlighting for the next uh, phase of components for that particular level to be installed. Um, and then the other stuff is displaying as a solid uh, graphic here. And then over here, if you look at the top uh, left-hand corner, we have the day of the week, the time, um, and then we have a date time stamp uh, and other stuff relating to the construction program. So a pretty simple way to um, do a basic uh, construction animation here using Timeliner. Uh, if you want to configure this even more, we have uh, a number of other tools to do your overlay text. So you can start to go through here and add date, times, uh, cost, extras, you can start to customize the fonts and all that should you want to. And then uh, you've got the option to link it in with uh, saved viewpoints animations. Uh, there's even an option uh, to do timeliner if you really uh, with uh, timeliner with uh, full-on construction animation should you want to, and you can uh, view the planned, um, planned versus actual differences, planned against actual 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 plan differences. So there's always different ways you can communicate um, the construction sequencing here using Navisworks timeliner. Uh, if you want to see one that's uh, a little bit more uh, polished here. So what I have on the screen here is one that I've put together using the sample house data set that ships with Revit. And this is one that I've taken a little bit more time to develop. What I have up here on the left hand side is the date and time stamp. I've also added materials and labors, subby costs, equipment and total costs. And you can see as certain components are being installed, it's highlighting uh, the percentage of how far you are with that construction program and we're in week, week one. I've also uh, animated certain sort of components and changed the camera views, uh, used divided parts in Revit to break up those uh, slabs, so whether it's in situ or for your pore sequences, you can really start to dive down deep on this. So that's an example. This is uh, also on my YouTube chan channel, uh, Samuel McAllister YouTube, uh, and you can see uh, a more polished uh, video there for a construction uh, sequence. Uh, and the basic one I have here, of course, is the uh, one direct within Navisworks world structure. And uh, finally, if you do want to uh, go one step further with this, you can take it into the animation. Uh, you can go to export the animation. And uh, here we've got the timeline of simulation. You can do it um, just via the viewport render, what you see there on the screen. It's an okay graphic, or you could even use like an, an Autodesk type render and then there's um, different types of outputs here and uh, frame rates. So that's uh, essentially the timeliner for Navisworks. Pretty simple, easy to use. And uh, I encourage you to have a look at um, a number of the settings and different configurations to fine tune uh, the data. There's uh, more information here uh, to actually customize the columns, uh, different ways to customize how you bring in the different data sources. Uh, incredibly powerful tool and a great way to communicate 
to numerous stakeholders working on this construction program uh, when and where certain components need to be uh, installed and configured.